What's up, everybody? It's AJ with eTro.com. Today we're going to be checking out the Kurt Premium 4x bike, bike Rack on our 2021 Buick Encore GX. It's going to be a hang style bike rack. You can already see we have the bike on there, so we would arguably recommend not using a carbon fiber bike. Probably not the best case for this one just because you don't want to put that any pressure or scratch up that frame on a carbon fiber. We have an aluminum road bike on there today. It's going to be just fine. Your mountain bike's going to be just fine. All the other ones will be all right. Now it holds the bike by the straps up here. Holds it nice and tight. I can shake the whole bike rack back and forth. Another thing that really helps is this stabilization strap right here. So I'll remove it and show you. If you didn't have it, you see there'd be a lot more movement back and forth. But with that, you can strap it down. And now, it sure does move a little bit, but that's far less than there was before. So that's really good, especially when you get all the bikes on there. You don't have to worry about them bumping into each other or anything like that. Another thing that's unique about this one, it's got the tapered end here, which really makes it easier when you do have these four bikes and you go to put them onto the bike rack. Sometimes the frame might hit here. It's just easier to get through this portion to get to the back to get the bike. Let me just go ahead and take this bike off and show you what I'm talking about. Strap's really easy to use. So then I'm gonna come up here, grab the bike. I'm gonna go to pull it off. It gets way easier here because you see how much room there is for the frame. Just easier loading, especially when you're doing four bikes. I'm gonna set this aside. We can take a better look at the cradles. Now they do have a coating on them, so you don't have to worry about them damaging the frame. Just like the straps, they're not gonna scratch anything up. I do recommend replacing those. We're not using them, just keep everything nice and neat. Those all up, let's go ahead and get some measurements. With the arms folded out, we're gonna go from the bumper to the furthest out point. Looks like about 36 inches right there, so that's quite a bit. Add it onto the back of your vehicle, so just keep that in mind when you're driving around with it. Now, when you don't have a bike loaded, you can actually take away from that and lower the arms. I'm just gonna pop this pin here at the top. With that removed, you can just lower the arms down. You're gonna replace the pin here at this section. Right there, that's on me. Now let's get a measurement and see how much more, or how much less space it takes up. Looks like from that same point on the bumper, it's right here, 12 and a half inches. So that's quite a bit less, but still, again, remember it's back there. You don't have any issues when you're backing out tight spaces or even pulling into your garage. You don't wanna shut anything down on there. Now another thing it does, let me put the tape measure back as you can tilt it away from the vehicle. That way, if you need access to the back hatch, you've already got your bike rack installed. You don't have to remove the whole thing just to get back there. Now, how you do that, you're gonna come down here, you got a clip and a pin, pull the clip out to get ready because you're gonna wanna loosen up this bolt back here. That takes a lot of the rattle out of your bike rack. You see, as I loosen it, it moves around a lot more. That's gonna loosen that up so I can pop that pin out of the side, and then you pull this latch up here. So that is gonna let you lower it down to there, and now you have access to the back of your vehicle. So if you forgot to throw the cooler in, or you wanna get the cooler out, and you've already got the bike rack loaded, you can easily do that, move it out, and don't have to take everything back off. And just do the same process in reverse. You might have to lift up on the latch so it goes back into place right there. We'll replace the pin here at the bottom. And then our clip finally. And then we'll tighten down this knob too just to keep it from moving around anymore. So you tighten it up far less movement there. You see it's got an anti-rattle bolt here in the hitch. Fits two inch by two inch hitches. I can shake the whole car back and forth. 
You see there's no rattling or movement here in the shank, so you don't have to worry about it causing any issues when you're going down the road. Now I will say that it also comes in a five, or five bike version, so if you just need one more bike to carry, you can get it four or five. That does it. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope this helped. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.